Our Earth is a blue pearl in the vastness of the universe. When the United States astronauts, during their first orbits around the moon in the late 1960s, saw the Earth rising above the moon, they shared these images with humanity, and we became awestruck at how fragile our home seems in the black nothingness of infinity. It was the moment when we realized that this island of bliss of life is something very special, something that may not exist a second time like this in the cosmos. The pictures of the Earth, seen from the orbit, belong, meanwhile, to the background graphics in almost every news broadcast, so to speak, as a symbol for our globalized world. The human being who has raised himself to walk on two legs, who stands out as crown of the creation from this, and has an unprecedented history of his existence in the advancement of the evolution behind itself. A conscious being which reflects its deeds, which brings up empathy and compassion, and over its untiring researcher urge, into the depths scouts the universe, looks, and to the smallest building blocks of the matter penetrated. Where do we come from, and where are we going? A big question that has never left us since we became conscious. Billions and billions of nerve cells have formed over millions of years to recognize what the world is, to find their place in it. The spirit that rose from nature and with creativity and recognition mastered the challenges of the struggle for survival and made its special way into a civilization, but a path that was also paved with immeasurable pain and suffering. Again and again, in the name of God, we have murdered our brothers and sisters, subjugated and proselytized other cultures, and cruelly waged countless holy wars. The tyrants of the approaching civilizations ruled over life and death. The freedom of the individual was subjugated to the collective, the state, and ideologies of a few powerful people. In the 19th and 20th centuries, the democratic movement slowly germinated its way into more human concepts of coexistence and technological and medical developments, raised the hopes of the people around the world for an end to evil and a long and happy life. Man who produced superhuman deeds to subdue his world, he believed that God called him to continue his creation. The mind, a marvel of evolution, which thinks that it can think everything, and that there are no limits for it. Everything seems to be feasible. Everything seems to be attainable. In the last hundred years, we have really run up to the top form with our thinking machine. We not only dissemble the world into its components, but also recognize the supposed laws of nature and the spirit itself. Only a small piece, and then we have closed the circle of the cognition. Then we have found the formula of the being for everything that is. Science has become the new religion, and the evolutionary biologist Richard Dawkins tries with his book, The God Delusion, to write against the thinking nonsense of mankind to snatch the belief in a god from them finally. Nevertheless, two-thirds of the world population believe in a higher instance of being. Also, the science could not really find out God, and so six of eight physics Nobel Prize winners are convinced that a transcendent intelligence is behind all this working and the found nature laws. A 
Again and again on this long way forced into diversity, continents, tribes to advance civilizations and were nevertheless always doomed. Whether Mayas, Aztecs, Sumerians, Babylonians, Egyptians, Greeks, or Romans, the hidden history of civilizations on our planet, like Lemuria and Atlantis, which at their time of their decline were far more advanced, not only technologically, also brought down their ignorance and megalomania. None of the previous high civilizations seemed to last. None of these civilizations could stand their ground in the face of the enemy for that enemy was always themselves. War, destruction, and oppression continued from ideology to ideology, from crucifixion to inquisition, to gulag and holocausts. As knowledge of the world grew, so did the penetrating power of our weapons. From the hand axe to the cannon, from poisonous gas to the hydrogen bomb and cyber war. War as last means of the reason for a rational being, which lets think about the possibilities of the peaceful living together into each new time epoch over its philosophies and fathoms, which is then the human wolf. Other countries, other customs, and science as a mediator of cultures, independent, neutral, for the necessary knowledge for survival, for our future of our civilization. But the picture is deceptive. Our systems are driven by power, greed, money, and exploitation, thus dismantling our habitat step by step. Since we drove the first stake into the ground, we lost our innocence. So the shocking analysis of the historian Rutger Bergman in his book, Basically Good. This marked the dead end of civilization, the separation from perfect unity with nature. The great thinkers recognized early on the pitfalls of our previous actions, but the promises of more well-being, more happiness, and more protection have locked this campaign into modern times so firmly that turning back no longer seems possible. Thanks to technology and medical care, life expectancies worldwide have increased almost threefold since 1800. We are living in an epic of superlatives, in a time when mankind has been exposed to such an extremely rapid process of change in just one generation. Never before has the action of a single species had such extreme consequences for the planet. This goes from the mass destruction of our forests, oceans, atmosphere, to the entire flora and fauna. Every year, about 58,000 animal species disappear forever from the face of the earth. In the last 15 years, the biomass of insects in Germany has decreased by about 80%, mainly due to our way of farming. Never before have so many fish been caught to be fed to cows, turning herbivores into marine predators and more than 300,000 whales and dolphins die in fishing nets as bycatch due to suffocation. Since 2018, deforestation of rainforests has increased by as much as 30% annually to about 30 million hectares. In addition, 10 million hectares of arable land are lost every year, the equivalent of 14 million soccer fields. Around 400,000 metric tons of plastic float on the surface of the oceans, although this represents only 30% of the total amount because 70% sinks to the ocean floor. 
there seems to be no end to the list of suffering. The early warnings of some experts, the Club of Rome in the early 70s, got only a few headlines in the news. In the meantime, the value of a message depends on the horror of the message. We have become accustomed to these doomsday messages and Hollywood shows us every day anew that in the end, a savior will come to turn the tide. Everything will be fine and the end is still a long way off. Panic mode as a bedtime snack and then the next morning at work in pandemic mode again to support the system. What else should we do? The conditioned compulsion to consume as a personal devotional expansion in order to catch the short moment of happiness again and again was already denounced by Eric Fromm in his book Haben oder Sein, Buy What the Stuff Holds, until again our anxiety, depression, and psychosomatic episodes fuel our visits to the doctor. Faster, higher, further the turbo capitalism driver for the world noise of our species. Matter as the basis of being. The better adapted, the faster, the smarter, and the most possessed will survive. A propaganda of a thinking system which has risen again to a high civilization which can continue to survive only over growth. Like a virus that brings down its host and a social Western cancer that is looking for a new and better chemotherapy for its survival. There is no alternative for growth, all economists agree. And in return, an environmental activism running again and again into the void of the younger wealthy generation as a last altruistic act of species protection in order to make possible, perhaps, nevertheless, still a grandchild-suited Earth. Yes, bet on e-cars and electricity from wind and sun, really? But the extinction of species, global warming, deforestation, CO2 emissions, plastic waste, and the boundless destruction of our fertile soils continues unchecked. Weapons for wars instead of extensive aid and food for the poor of the world. In our leading media, it is suggested to us that our civilization possesses all knowledge to master this crisis. But before that, one last war to wage, one last tree to cut down, one last oil well to drill, one last vaccination. A cultural, ideological, and technically driven path of suffering disguised as civilization of the 21st century, which drags everything tangible with it into the abyss and into the slaughterhouses. The perversion of killing for our flesh unnecessary food has perfected to the maximum form. We have created structures for ourselves that no longer allow the 8 billion people to make active and quick decisions that could end this path of extinction even though we all see that it is no longer 5 to 12, but already 3.30 past midnight. One of the most important thinkers for progress, Ray Kurzweil, is sure that we humans still have so much potential for improvement even on our own bodies. With his visions, he tirelessly drives the industry of the transhumanist worldview for the further development of artificial intelligence and virtual worlds, and the materialistic science follows enthusiastically, because for them, the human being and everything living is only biochemical machines which have emerged by chance and error from the sea of evolution. Their world is the dead matter as the only reality, which knows at the end only the death which it applies now finally to overcome. In 2040, Ray predicts, the technological singularity will be achieved and we will be able to scan our eye and save it on a chip, promising eternal life. Elon Musk, also one of the most innovative visionaries of our time, speaks of the fact that we can win the battle with AI, created by ourselves, only if we connect with it, and recently presented his Neuralink, a microchip interface implanted in the brain to connect our thinking with AI. A mind of our civilization lost on its way out of nature into the abstraction of thought and action that can only end in its demise like all others before it.
Let's change the perspective. Our materialistic, reductionistic worldview would be now at the end, and if actually the being would be based on matter, then we could close this book of the last chapter of our civilization now finally. I am Johann Nepomuk Meyer at home in Bavaria. Since my childhood, I have had paranormal experiences again and again. They have brought me finally to investigate and document these phenomena more closely. I travel around the world and talk to researchers who have discovered sensational things that the public usually does not know about. However, their findings are tremendous and so relevant to our existence that I want to give them a bigger stage. Unfortunately, these facts are not taught in any school and are not studied. I'm sure in 100 years what you experience in my documentaries will be quite normal because almost three quarters of the population have already had an extraordinary experience at least once. But almost no one speaks publicly about it because these phenomena obviously do not fit into our current worldview. But it is different from what we have been taught so far. The realizations of many courageous researchers point to another picture of the being. One in which visible reality does not correspond to actual reality. Unfortunately, this has not been understood, since our spirit of the times propagates and holds up an evolutionary worldview that tolerates no deviation. As already Galileo Galilei was allowed to experience, nobody wanted to look through his new telescope, because all experts agreed that the moon has no craters. Every age has its cemented worldview, and just as Thomas Kuhn already recognized in his work that science does not progress linearly, but in leaps. The paradigm shift of our worldview already becomes visible on the horizon of visionaries. When the walls of ignorance crumble and we recognize that consciousness is the basis of being and matter is an illusion. From a higher point of view, every end is also a new beginning. And so we have discovered that about every 80 million years a faunal change occurs in which almost all species disappear from the planet. However, these catastrophes create in return innumerable new possibilities of the new development of the being to be allowed to unfold in dissimilar new play forms of the life. In the age of man, the Anthropocene, this time we seem to have assumed the role of the destroyer, the restarter. The emerging holistic view of the world allows a new, unknown, and more comprehensive view of these realities and makes us realize that this world is not the only play of life. This view into other spheres lets us realize that we, as spiritual beings, are from the origin of an eternal source of life, to be allowed to make our experiences of consciousness here in this world an adventure journey which we ourselves created with many others and now with our lives give this planning an existence. A completely new knowledge that what we have recognized as civilization is actually the exact opposite. The complete system of our earth is a final life civilization in which we are allowed to collect comprehensible experiences as a consciously inspired guest in order to be able to grow further in other worlds a never-ending being, full of discoveries, of an intelligence that allows love in perfection through free will to express itself as it wishes. We are allowed to enter spheres beyond our imagination and knowledge, a journey without end. Space and time do not matter, and the laws of nature that we have been allowed to discover in our civilization only matter in this full immersion and every other sphere has its own possibilities that are beyond what we previously thought possible.
We will listen to these realizations after this perfect system has restored the balance that we, as human beings, have brought into disarray. Then we will understand more that the way to a civilization has infinite ways, but will never find an end. Other civilizations have brought their technology to transcendent maturity. They look upon us and suffer with us. They will help us understand that we are all the same soul spark, and only the physical appearance can vary as a kind of adventure suit from incarnation to incarnation. This new knowledge will open the doors for future generations of people, after the apocalypse on this planet, to a universe where the diversity of civilizations will be allowed to exist. The new people, as children of the new time, who then dare to take a further step to build a new civilization in order to be able to recognize again that this also represents only a potential way into the eternal. Our Earth, a perfect biological civilization created by beings from higher world in order to reveal to all beings our understanding, the possibility to go into such a finite 3D reality. They give us again and again the choice with our being to come here, to incarnate anew, to experience the illusion of matter, to expand our path of consciousness with five senses. To discover separation, to feel pain and suffering, to be able to experience love, hope, goodness, and freedom from this perspective. Incarnate consciousness, pressing through the birth canal of forgetfulness to live a life that can experience finitude in the eternity of its own being. six visions that I call the visions of awakening, visions that I pull out of all these other sessions that I've already presented, and I just kind of weave them together to tell, to show the coherent story, the story of this great awakening, the story of this birth that we are coming into. And I had seen over four years this story, but it never showed me how it was going to pull it off. I never saw how we were going to make this jump in consciousness. And then in 1995, a week before Christmas, 
I went into, I was expecting to go, I was in the diamond luminosity work. I was expecting to go one more time into the diamond luminosity state. But instead, the universe threw me far into deep time, far into humanity's future. And it gave me the experience of the death and rebirth of our species at a collective level. There was nothing personal about my experience. I, 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 I was the human species. I was the psyche of the planet as a whole. I had dissolved into the, the collective psyche. And I experienced a death that took place at that level. It was a near-death experience, but for the species. There was a time we were overtaken by conditions. It was a loss of control. It was a loss of a deconstruction. It was a time of great suffering. I think the 21st century is going to be the beginning of the dark night of our collective soul. It is going to be the time of the great undoing. We're going to lose control. We've postponed making the important em environmental, ecological, cultural decisions so many times that I think there's no avoiding the fact that we are coming to a time of a great global systems crisis. And just when it had reached its worst, just when it was at its worst, it passed. The storm passed like a hurricane going over an island. And when we began to collect ourselves, to pick ourselves off of the ground, there was an exponential growth of light within the human species, a, an exponential growth in intelligence, in ideas, in creativity, in social formulations, in social formats. New families were springing up. I think that this process that we are going through is leading us not simply to recreate our culture and recreate society and to create a new technology and a new economy. It's literally a, a transformation that is taking place at the core of the collective psyche. Our collective psyche is going to make a shift into a, a new foundation. And after that point, everyone born a human being is going to be operating out of a new foundation. I think we truly are becoming a, a species of Buddhas, a species of Christ and prophets.